you alluded to it. I was going to ask you something that most people don't know about you. What would you say? Uh, a lot of people know it and don't know it, but I'm a I'm an avid golfer. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> I That's mean, I, I I love, love, love to play golf. Okay. I, I mean, a lot of people do know, but I caddied at Inverness for 15 years. Okay. I mean, I met a lot of great people who's who's still helping me here today. Mm -hmm. A lot of them came to my city championship game. I still keep in touch with them. Um, I actually won caddy the year at Inverness seven times. Oh, my God. So I mean, a lot of people don't know that, but I love golf. I, I, 15 years there, my first four years, I didn't really like golfing, but... They always used to tell me, like, I ask the older guys, like, man, how do you start making more money? Mm -hmm. And they say, you got to learn how to look, read the greens. You got to learn how to club them. I'm like, how do you do that? I'm like, you got to learn how to hit. So I thought you were going to say that. Most people don't know you have a twin, but maybe they know that. And he's identical. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Dennis Hobson said one time he walked into the dentist and completely thought your brother was you. Mm -hmm. So uh to, to have a, a twin brother, does he play basketball? Does he do? You, are you guys similar at all? Yeah, we identical. Like, I mean, he always comes up to me and say, Matt, Matthew, I'm tired of people thinking I'm you, because yeah. you know I'm the head coach here, and he goes out and he plays in um, YMCA leagues at the Wolf Creek and all that. And every time he walks in anywhere, a grocery store, or people always think he's me. Um, he actually started playing college b basketball right after high school. Mm -hmm. He actually went down and played basketball in Canada. So mm -hmm. we went some years without being with each other and kind of grew apart. But mm -hmm. we, as far as when he came back, we lived together for 29 years. We just we just moved to separate like a year ago. So wow. we, we was attached at the hip. I mean, love him to death. Mm -hmm. uh, does he give you any advice coaching wise? Always. I mean, I always get on him about like coming to help me out because he, he knows the game. He plays at the college level. but. I'm like, man, you just need to come help me coach. You always call me and tell me this and that about my team. Come mm -hmm. help. He was like, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I'm like, I'll, yeah, I'm like, I'll teach you how to do it. Because I wanted him to be my freshman coach this year. And he's just not confident in his X's and O's. And I'm like, really, it ain't about that. I'll show you those things. Just come and you know how to play the game. You know how to, you know how to train people because you play successful basketball in Canada. You actually played there and was getting paid to, to play, which a lot of these kids want to do. But... Oh, I mean, he ain't, he ain't on, on page right now, but hopefully I can get him to do it here in the next few years. How, how much do you think it would kind of like set, I don't know, not frighten people, but surprise them seeing two of the same people <laughs> coaching a team? Uh, I don't think it'll frighten people. I mean, like, I, I think it'd just be funny. And I love to, I love to coach with my brother. I mean, yeah. us being not, not together this last year, not living together, we hardly see each other now. So if I could finally get him back on, get him to want to coach, yeah. we could actually get, get our a close relationship back which kind of faded away but I mean not saying that we're not close but yeah. you know usually seeing him every single day seeing him at home whenever whatever time each one of us gets home but now not only seeing him here once or twice a week it's kind of been different kind of been an adjustment so I mean it'll, 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 it'll kind of weird people out but I don't, I don't think it'll be a problem. It would be different. Did you guys ever switch classes at all? <laughs> It's funny, like we always wanted to, but okay. we never you did. I mean, I, he wanted to do it. I just was never on page with it. I was okay. kind of nervous about get being caught, even though I don't think we ever would have. But yeah. well, we never did it. The biggest thing you learned about yourself being a head coach here at Start. Um, biggest thing I learned, I, I mean, being more patient. I mean, that's what I've learned. Um, and it's ac actually this year, I'm, I actually work in an um, MD classroom teacher name is Megan Lucas and she's actually been helping me out but with my patients and working with the uh, special needs kids because I mean I was working at Bowser with with um, with ED kids was just more like um, behavioral kids but now being in the classroom and now it's kind of different working with these kids and it was a big adjustment for me which I wasn't really un comfortable with at first but being in the classroom working with these kids and it's, it's just making me uh, develop a little bit more patience so when I get out of school I get to practice. Sometimes I'm still frustrated dealing with um, my classroom, but I get there and realize, like, I mean, now I'm dealing with kids that's less fortunate than the kids that I got to work with from um, from seven to three. But I mean, I I've learned a lot of patience and how to like let a lot of stuff slide by with the kids. And, like, I'm learned how to um, let a lot of stuff go and just realize, like, these are just kids. Like, my first few years, I just was like a drill sergeant. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this right. But I've started to let stuff slide by, talk to the kids more one-on-one -on -one in the office after practicing, and not really be that drill sergeant, like, getting on them in front of everybody.